I thank you, your neighbors will thank you, and ultimately, we believe the city of New York will thank you. It's now my honor to present our esteemed panel of speakers by name, all of whom are co-signatories in support of Earth's mission, beginning with State Senator Ms. Thank you. Without the mic, it's fine. Yeah. Hello again. Oh, that's oh, working. Great. Hi, I'm Liz Kruger. I'm your state senator. If you live in this area, which probably everybody does, I'm really here today to say that I stand in support of the community and of all your state and city elected officials fighting this and supporting the proposal of the community to change the zoning. I think that the point that we just made we're exactly on point. I say when you notice the reference to the fact that this is the only section of New York City where the mid-block zoning is not recognized as needing to be contextual and limited, it does beg the question, how did that happen? And I was speaking to my uh, staffer, who's my zoning expert, and I said, why is this the case? And she said, I actually don't know, so I'm hoping somebody might well have an answer for us today, because I find it amazing that this would be the only neighborhood in New York City that didn't have the protection for height and contextual design that everywhere else does in the city of New York. And of course, we live right here in Manhattan, and most of you live right here in the East 50s, so you know you just keep crossing west from here, and you see the problems that are literally growing from out of proportion, super tall buildings, um, literally crossing Manhattan Island from east to west in the 50s. And when I talk about a livable city, and why I am proud to live here and represent this district, and why I know you all want to live here, and even why I know so many other people want to come and live here, it's because we are a livable city. We have light and air. Not enough of it, but you can see light here today on this beautiful day. And I'm quite sure that if we allow sections of the city, disproportionately Manhattan, to become Singapore, it isn't going to be a livable city. And that we will actually flunk the test that we think we're trying to accomplish to make sure New York City continues to be a 21st century model of the frankly, the international city of the world where people want to come here to be tourists, people want to live here, people want to do business here, but it only works if it's a balance between the needs of the communities who live here and the uh, demographics and geography that we allow to be the design in our city. So I'm really here to say as a state legislator, I don't get a vote on any of this, but I continue my commitment to fighting for what I know is the right answer for the city of New York, not just this neighborhood, but the entire city of New York, that there needs to be reevaluation of the out of control, tall super buildings, that we don't accept the <coughs> argument that this is somehow a NIMBY argument. As you just heard, this community is strong in supporting plans for expanding affordable units in our community having rational growth that ensures that there are affordable units and new people can come to live and work here, but in context with everything else in the neighborhoods. And I also don't accept the argument that we might sound like some other neighborhoods who get upset about going from six to 10 stories in their communities. That's not what we are talking about. We are talking about 250 feet versus 850 feet or 1,000 feet, okay? So remember, there's a different level of discussion, and it is critical, and I certainly um, am committed to working with all the people you see here, the, the mayor, the city council and whole, city planning department, to get this proposal evaluated and approved as quickly as possible. So thank you all for coming out, and thank you for the organizers for doing such a tremendous amount of work to make sure we have the tools we need. Thank you. Thank you so much.
Pleasure. I'd like to ask Council Member Dan Garagin to come up because he has to leave a little bit early and he got stuck in the elevator like so many of you all. <laughs> Thank you very much, and uh, good morning, everyone. Um, and thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to jump the line a little bit here. As you heard, my name is Dan Garodnik, and I'm one of the two council members uh, representing uh, Sutton Place. Uh, most of it uh, belongs to Council Member Kalos, who you all know well. I have a couple of blocks at the southern end. Um, and I wanted to be here today, and this is obviously not our first time together, uh, to first say congratulations uh, for where we are at this point, because the idea of a community-based uh, zoning to be proposed and to be advanced to the stage where it is, is highly unusual, as you heard. Uh, and it's all the more reason why it deserves to move and why it deserves to get the respect of city planning and the mayor and why we need to continue to push it over the goal line. It is a good plan. It is a thoughtful plan. It is uh, not an unreasonable one. It plays to uh, the values and interests of the city in a very, very real way. Uh, and the rules that are in place are just out of whack. It just don't make sense. Uh, and this is a very, very compelling way to address that problem. Uh, Community-based planning and zoning applications like this one are the future, I think, of zoning in New York City. I just had the privilege of co-chairing a steering committee for <coughs> over a year with the borough president, who you're going to hear from in a minute, and we talked to stakeholders from all around East Midtown about what they needed in a future rezoning plan, and submitted it to city planning, and they took it and essentially pieced it together into a zoning application. Same thing is happening in East Harlem right now, and you all have done something even more significant, which is to actually hire the professionals, actually develop the plan put it in place, ask the elected officials to be co-applicants with you, which we were honored, all of us, to do. Uh, and now, it's time for this thing to move. We have an unusual moment in history, because we have a city planning chair who has just left, and we have a new city planning chair who is coming in in about three weeks or so. So we have an application which is pending, and we have uh, no chair of city planning at this moment. But the point that you should be left with today is that they need to hear from you. They need to hear very clearly. They need to hear consistently about the importance of this application to this community. Uh, you know, I have, uh, I have seen Council Member Kalos raise this issue with the mayor directly. We have been in meetings, and I've seen him do that, and I want you to know that because it's important, because you don't necessarily see everything that we get to do on a daily basis. I have seen him raise that issue directly. Uh, it's certainly something that I support and am amplifying, but we need your voices there consistently. It will help to move this thing, and uh, I am pleased to be a co-applicant honored to be here today and while I'm sorry that I have to leave a little early, uh, please know that, that my staff is here and we are ready to help however we can. Thank you. Hello, and now it is my great honor to give you Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer. know something as a board president but as somebody who's been around for a very long time um, you don't often see in our business the kind of quality that Lisa and Bob and all of you have produced it has been thoughtful pleasure to work with that I can say about most situations pleasure to work with and the kind of response that every single community should be proud of. So really, they deserve a huge round of applause. And I don't say that about most people. Thank you. And the second thing I want to say is that there are two names in addition to the mayor. The new person taking over City Planning Commission is Marissa Lago, L-A-G-O. She is a person you should address letters to. I am not a big proponent of petitions and even emails. Letters really count. And then there's Rick Chandler, who is a Department of Buildings. You heard earlier from Lisa and from Bob that we want to make sure that the Department of Buildings doesn't have any permits that pop up. 
that then would prevent us from following up on this wonderful proposal. All the elected officials in January wrote to the Department of Buildings and said, do not have any permits pulled for this particular location. So those are the two names in addition to the mayor that you need to address calls, letters to. Um, I am just like everyone else, a huge supporter of the East River 50s Alliance. Um, I have discussed it with the outgoing chair of the City Planning Commission, as Ben has, as Dan has, as Liz has. Wonderful man. We didn't get where we need to get, and so we need to be even more forceful. Um, I think lots of people in our business and the public like to reduce things to left versus right, yes versus no, bill versus preserve. Some issues are that simple. This one is not. It is not a simple yes or no. And understanding how to make a plan that addresses everyone's need, that's key. And guess what? You have done that. Um, you are not, you are not, not in my backyard. Um, and people should understand that we see along 57th Street super towers that block out light and air and the park. And that's not what we want here in the 50s. We want something better. You said something better in your proposal. You said something very special. Roughly a quarter of new units would be affordable. Height and design controls would allow reasonable development are preventing mega towers on residential blocks and you're driven by the community. This is a residential plan from the community. It's the pre-planning that Dan talked about. We've been doing that, yes, in the two neighborhoods he mentioned, in Inwood. We've been doing that at the South Street Seaport. We stopped that big tower. God knows what's next, but we stopped that big tower. And we've been doing it in Chinatown. All of these places are in process. East Midtown has gone to the city planning, but you are ahead of the game. You're setting a very high standard for everyone else. Um, a good plan that is not in effect still leaves us at risk from what the current zoning allows. We're only asking for the same thing most other predominantly residential areas of Manhattan have. And the mid blocks remain designated as an R10, the highest residential density allowed in zoning today. Everywhere else, City Planning Commission has placed the 1960s R10 zoning designation, replaced it with contextual zoning requirements that sets heights for the neighborhoods. And that's all we want here. That's all we want here. So we know that we're against time because the real estate group that is trying to rush the file plans for the 850 foot tall luxury tower we have, we have, as I indicated, reached out to the Department of Buildings, but it's an election year. Write those letters. You're very uh, lucky and fortunate, as I indicated, to have such great leaders. People who understand conceptually, who come up with a great plan, and not every community has this kind of backup. I hope that by setting this precedent, the East River 50s Alliance blazes a trail not only for here, but for other neighborhoods. And I think that's another point to be made in the letter. So I am thrilled, really, to support uh, your plan and to say that um, the fact that you've come up with your own positive, context-based zoning that provides affordable housing, the entire city should thank you, and I certainly do, and we will keep working with the City Planning Commission, the Department of Buildings, and the Mayor, and this administration to say your plan is the one we should support. Thank you very much. And now, our own Ben Kalos. Thank you, Councilman. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. One more time. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I want to thank all of you for being here uh, this morning and everyone in back you can hear me too yeah. perfect thank you and sorry we didn't have enough seats for you so I think I just want to start by saying the city can and must do more to stop the march of super scrapers across 57th Street into residential neighborhoods 
And uh, just to give you a rewind, uh, how many of you is this your first meeting? Do we have any first timers here? So for the rest of you, you you've heard this story before, but uh, right around Easter uh, in 2015, I'm there at the Sutton Area Community's Easter Egg Hunt, and if you haven't participated in it, it's great for uh, residents of all ages, but mainly the kids. And uh, Dieter Seelig walks over to me and he says, hey, do you hear about that new thousand foot tower going in? And uh, I asked him if it was an April Fool's joke. It wasn't. And uh, right around then, we worked really hard with uh, Our Town. We actually uh, got a reporter there from Our Town today. And we got the news out to the community. And as soon as that happened, folks got concerned. We came out to Community Board 6, and Community Board 6 passed a resolution calling for a 210-foot high cap within 45 days, and I've never seen a community board move that quickly. Yeah. And so the way it's supposed to work is you, community board says we want to change the zoning, and then city planning is supposed to do something. And if we had waited, uh, we'd still be waiting. And so we did something different, and so Dieter and I started going to co-op and condo uh, board meetings and annual meetings, and we would go and we would ask people to put money towards a community effort. Soon we were joined by Alan Kirsch, and we went building by building, and we built the East River 50s Alliance, led by Alan Kirsch, Robert Shepler, Lisa Mercurio, <coughs> Jessica Osborne, a leadership community, committee and over 35 buildings in the community and over 400 individual members. And along the same lines we've had local heroes who have been fighting every step of the way. And so I think at the beginning there was some question about how tall is this building? Is it that thousand feet we heard about in 2015? Is it 850 as it is now? And the answer is when they first filed, the developer who said that it was already going to be built by now, who was a liar, uh, lied and said he had four <coughs> buildings instead of three buildings. And so the reason he only has three buildings is because of a gentleman named Herndon Worth, who has been holding out, resisting buyout offers, resisting harassment, and keeping him from acquiring that fourth building. And I promise you, they're still trying. And if they could convince him to say yes, or if anything, God forbid, happened to him, it would be much taller and they would get all the buildings. And it doesn't even stop there. Harassing other heroes, like Charles Fernandez, a retired security guard. He's lived here with his family for decades in the same building. And he's been facing harassment, a lot of harassment. They uh, told him that they were going to come in, drill holes in his wall, so that he was going to be exposed to the elements, drill holes in his ceilings, move his furniture around without his permission, come in and out of his apartment when he wasn't there. And because of the East River 50s Alliance, their legal support and our office, we've been able to get stop work order after stop work order after I think this is now our third stop work order because they kept trying to do things that were against the law. There's something called a tenant protection plan that needs to be there that they seemed to omit and DOB had approved it anyway. And so every step of this way, while this developer tries to cut every corner that they can, we will be there as a community to stop them. And so we have a, a great new plan, and I think we have a poster board somewhere that explains it. Uh, so I think, so just while we're here, this is what's at stake. This is what losing looks like. And uh, we've got these big red lines that show us what losing looks like, but what's missing is the shadows. And so what we'd be living in is the shadows of these tall buildings. And it wouldn't just be us, it would be most of Manhattan, because when you have a building that is a thousand feet tall, it has a multiplier of four, which means it would pass a shadow for 4,000 square feet, 4, feet, which is uh, pretty far, it's about a mile. And so it would cast a shadow all the way that way and all the way into Queens. Uh, so uh, that is what we're talking about. And so we have some of these flyers, and we'll pass them around pretty quickly. That pretty much summarized the plan. And uh, so what we're talking about is right now you have unlimited height. And so each building in this neighborhood 
as uh, a multiplier. So if you buy a uh, 1,000 square foot piece of land, so let's say you buy a piece of land like this, uh, you can just build on that and you can multiply it. In this case, uh, you can multiply it by 10. So you can take 10 sheets of paper like this and you can stack them on top of each other for a building that's 10 stories. But if you fold it over and use up half the space, you can put up a building that's 20 stories. And if you fold it a fourth time, now you're at uh, 40 stories. And if you fold it again, you're at 80 stories, which is about what we're looking at. And so what we'd like to do is say you can use the same amount of square footage, uh, but if you do, you're going to be capped at 210 feet. The other piece is if you decide to build affordable housing, not in another part of the city, not in another borough, but right here on site, you can get an additional two, so you can stack another two times, and uh, you can go up to about 260 feet. And we also have a problem in this district with not enough school seats. We just don't have them, and they're not building them. Even though we built two new schools in the neighborhood, we don't have enough school seats. We have 2,100 four-year-olds in my district, and when the mayor said pre-k for all, which I supported him on, uh, we got 124 school seats for those 2,100 four-year-olds. So this plan allows for community facilities to be built. So if you had a 10,000 square foot lot, you could put in 10,000 square feet of child care, which would actually provide seats for about 100 four-year-olds. And that's something else that we need. And so on this sheet, you can see the difference between if we do nothing and if we do something, and we need your help. So the first thing is all the experts, all the planners that we've had to hire cost money. So if you haven't donated already, please go to erfa.nyc slash donate. The information is at the bottom of this flyer. Additionally, if you haven't already, we need you to write a letter to the mayor, write a letter to city planning, letting them know that you want affordable housing in your neighborhood, that you want schools in your neighborhood, and that the last thing the city wants is to replace our residential neighborhoods with super scrapers that are purchased by foreign <coughs> investors who don't live in the buildings and don't pay taxes. And that has been reported very well by the New York Times, and we want neighborhoods that people live in. And right now, we've stopped it. The, the super scrapers are in commercial districts. And I'm okay with tall buildings in commercial neighborhoods where folks really aren't living and really shouldn't be living because it's commercial. So the lipstick building over there, big fan of it. Glad folks are there, glad folks are working. But when you have a residential district, we need to draw the line. And so I just want to thank all of you for coming out. I want to thank Mr. Rapinzi's Alliance for their partnership in making this happen. Our bar president, Gail Brewer, who has a vote on ULERP applications, and she's already on the application, which means that hurdle is gone. My colleague, Councilmember Dave Gorodnik, who also has a vote on that, which means that hurdle is gone. Our community boards already, they're represented here today, Community Board 6 has a vote on it, but they've already passed a resolution in favor, which means the only thing between us and protecting our neighborhood is the City Planning Commission voting in favor of this, and we just need to make sure we make our voices heard and uh, win. Thank you. Do I need to use the microphone? Yes, please. Uh, how's that? Good. Great. Thank you. Okay. Again, these are questions that we receive uh, from our website. Uh, <clears throat> the first question to our elected officials. What more can be done to advance the application? What more can we do to win this race against time? Who would like to feel that? I'll start. So I think it's what we said, which is pressure counts. Uh, we had a lot of pressure on the South Street Seaport, and we got rid of that tall tower. And I, like I said, it's an election year. You have uh, an extremely well thought out plan. And as Councilmember Kahlo said, 
put affordable housing at the top of any uh, correspondence. Because the fact is Manhattan needs more. You are uh, perfectly situated to have this plan go into effect. And so I would suggest the only way to do it is the pressure that we've been discussing and the letters to the chair of the city planning commission, the mayor, and the head of the Department of Buildings. Thank you. Um, I'd like to ask the next question of you, Bob. Um, have you heard from the new owner? This is something I've heard in, in a couple of town halls. Have you heard from the new owner? And have you reached out to the new owner? And to the elected, have you heard from the new owner? The, the, the new owner and the developer, yes. the, the uh, person currently developing the site. Um, <clears throat> we have not heard from the owner developer, but we have indicated in the press, our president Alan Kirsch has indicated in the press that we would certainly be open to a dialogue with the owner developer, uh, but that has not yet occurred. So as I said, we're open to a dialogue. Um, we'll see if it happens. Uh, I don't take money from developers with interests that are not aligned with my communities. And uh, we have reached out to various developers, but for whatever reason, they've heard what my philosophy is, and they know who I work for, so they haven't been as interested in meeting with us. And I model that off of uh, a, a senator to, to my right. <laughs> I met with the previous uh, gentleman from another country, um, and I have not talked to the new owners. I'm open always to meet with any developer, but I will make it very clear which plan I support. Um, same, I have not heard from or reached out yet to the new owner, um, but I will take the same position as my two colleagues to my left. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question. The site owner appears to be moving very quickly in clearing the site and demolishing the existing buildings. Has Eartha run out of time? Do we know when the foundation will be poured, officially ending in defeat? Lisa, would you like to take that? What a fun question, Bob. Um, I can't really go into the supermarket these days without having someone say, is it over? I see the building coming down. There are all kinds of acts of intimidation that we can expect to see and feel more of. But this race is just that. It's a race. And it's not over till it's over. Look at the Patriots game this past weekend. <laughs> things, can, things can be slowed down at the finish line. We're working uh, in every possible way to make sure that this does not end and that we conclude with a positive story at the end of it. So the race is not over. Um, the game is not over. But we do need your support. And I'd just like to add, um, as I believe the borough president mentioned, um, she and our other elected officials, together with IRFA, did sign a letter in January um, to the Department of Buildings, making very clear to the Department of Buildings that we're asking for very careful review of any building plan for the site and expressing a concern that there be no partial or limited approvals of any um, building plan for the site. So um, we expect to be very vigilant around what this developer files and when. Um, and we're going to be very careful to make sure that there is a complete and careful review of a building of this size. Next question. Um, as we also heard from the borough president, there has been a change in the Department of City Planning's administration. Do you think the application will have a better chance of being certified soon? I'll start by stating, like a broken record, um, it is necessary to make sure the advocacy is there. Um, I do know the incoming chair. I don't believe she has the kind of history in the city of New York that uh, Paul Weisbrot had. She hasn't been in New York for a while. She's knowledgeable because she worked uh, in, the, in previous administrations. 
but it only, it, I think there's nothing better than getting that shitload of letters before you even start. So March 1st, you know what? Get them in now so that when she arrives, her desk is piled with correspondence from you. Because it's interesting, you know, when you come into government or into a new job, the first person who bugs you is the one that sticks with you. I just want to echo that uh, we hear from constituents constantly, but if we only hear from a dozen out of our 168,000, at least for me, uh, versus 100, versus 400, versus 1,000, so if every single East River 50s Alliance member, if every single person who lived in the neighborhood sent a letter to the mayor, and a letter to city planning commission, not a mean letter, but just saying, hey, we want affordable housing, we want school seats, please support this zoning change. That would be something that was a movement because we're not used to hearing from that many people on any given issue. So everyone needs to send those letters and everyone needs to make sure that they are heard. Can you post the address yeah. where to send the letters on the website with the proper title? There's a sample letter with the contact information on your chairs. So, and if you didn't get one, I'm sure there are other copies that you can have before you leave. And there's also a flyer. And there's also a flyer. Folks, if you want to sign the letter today, we'll send it in for you. Okay, yeah. All right. Yeah. Just, just drop it at the back or at right. the table at the time. Make sure your address is on it so that I'll get some more. they take you seriously and they can contact you back. And I was just going to add on. So it matters that everyone in this community reaches out and sends letters um, as being discussed. But you know what? We all know people who are friends who don't necessarily live in this neighborhood, but could write letters saying, this matters for the entire city, how we plan for communities that can be lived in. So ask your friends and relatives who live anywhere in the five boroughs to send those letters and build up the numbers because yes it matters most to us who live right here or represent you but actually as a precedent and as an important statement about planning for the 21st century it matters far wider than just this neighborhood i get asked all the time from people who live in other boroughs how did you let that giant building go up on park in 56 you can see it from Long Island and New Jersey and Connecticut. Why did that happen? So in fact, people get this even if they don't live right here. So ask them to sign a letter like this. Maybe you have to change one or two sentences because they don't live right here. But we should be able to build up the numbers of letters going in. I absolutely believe that. And as for we the people, we are a community here in Sutton Place of 30,000. I have not heard that 30,000 letters have found their way to the right spot. Yeah, 